The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, two blind men followed him, crying out, Son of David, have pity on us. When he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I can do this? Yes, Lord, they said to him. Then he touched their eyes and said, Let it be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread word of him through all that land. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some of the uh, the signs of of the season aren't uh, aren't seen today. We are in the first week of uh, of Advent, and. Uh, I don't know that the gospel we have is, at least at first glance, recognizably uh, Advent-themed, uh, Advent-centric, <laughs> but, um, and we're wearing uh, white, right? I'm wearing white today instead of, instead of purple. Purple, I'm usually like wearing something that looks closer to the color of the candle, but at least we have the, at least we have the candle lit, that, that first Advent candle. Uh, that, that's such a powerful reminder of this season uh, that we are celebrating. We wear white today because we're celebrating the feast of uh, St. Francis Xavier. And St. Francis Xavier, it said, is, is said to have baptized 30,000 people. It's pretty prolific, right? I'm, I'm not going to get anywhere close. To, I've been baptizing a lot of people, but uh, I'm not going to get anywhere close to 30,000 people. Um, and especially because Francis Xavier did it in a very relatively short period of time. Died when he was 46. So even his short life, very prolific in terms of the love of God that he was able to make flesh and make real for so many people, that he was able to bring them into the life of the Trinity, and that he was able to give them this great gift, the great gift of baptism, wherein God then dwells in his people. And we have to remember that as part of our Advent uh, preparations as well, is that we are indwelt by God. God. God's Holy Spirit lives in us. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. And so we are made, by virtue of the fact that God lives within us, we're, we're made to praise God. And we're made to bring his love to life in the world. And here we get, say, entrance into our gospel passage today, where we see Jesus, who is the love of God made flesh, healing two blind men. And the, one of the remarkable things we see, and this is where we get our Advent tie in, is the two blind men cry out to Jesus, Son of David, have pity on us. Son of David, have pity on us, right? They acknowledge Jesus as the king. That's what that means, right? David was the great king. If Jesus is the son of David, he's the king. So they say, Jesus, you're the king, and we entrust ourselves to you. We want to receive from your hand what you intend to give us, and we know, Lord, that what you intend to give is healing and hope consolation. We know we trust in God's compassion for us. And so we come before you to follow you as our king, to be restored by you so that we can be about the work of restoring the world. And that's our task, my friends. This Advent season is given to us as a preparation. We're preparing to receive Jesus. But we have to see that Jesus is our compassionate king. 
which means that we want to follow him with everything we've got and everything we have, right? All our attention, all our focus, all our energy is directed towards Jesus this season in hopes of receiving him more fruitfully when he comes. And today he comes, he comes among us as our compassionate Lord, and we receive him well when we commit ourselves to living God's service, bringing God's love to life just as he did for his wounded world.